Greetings and welcome. My name is Jake Rayson. I am a forest gardener and a forest garden designer. Uh, this is a regular weekly Wednesday 10 a.m. live stream, forest garden live stream. It is that it started life back in March as a lockdown live stream, and unfortunately, uh, it's it's turning out to be yet another lockdown live stream here in the UK in the various uh, nation states of the UK we uh, we have uh, lockdown in one form or another pretty much over the entire country and it is a bit scary at the moment so do do keep safe if you if you possibly can your your life is worth more than your job um i know it's it's kind of hard for, it's hard for everyone out there so yeah scary stuff anyway um <clears throat> today I was originally going to be doing a live stream about creating a paper map. Oh crikey, I haven't even got one here to show you what a paper map looks like. Well, it looks like uh, it's it's a piece of grid paper. Where on earth has it all gone? Oh no, I've had a, I've had a clean up. Obviously, a clean up means a clean up means I throw stuff away. Oh, here we go. Oh no, no, no. This is oh yes, it is. This is grid paper. So five mil. I'll try and try and. Can you see that? Five mil squares. Um, and then I would get an A3 five mil square. That's kind of the, the clearest and the simplest thing to do for, for a paper plan. But unfortunately, I left my measuring tapes back at the um, on the site where I'm, I'm doing some work. So I didn't, didn't have any measuring tapes yesterday. I was going to do some filming of me measuring things and showing you the different measuring techniques. But without a measuring tape, it would have looked a bit strange. So today we have something completely different. And the completely different thing is the forest, oopsie, the forest garden spreadsheet, which is incredibly exciting. So I'm sure uh, anyone who's interested in forest gardening, I really feel sometimes I ought to give a, a, a quick introduction to forest gardening at each live stream. But, um, Forest gardening is essentially you're growing an edible ecosystem. So you're working with nature to grow edible crops. And this is the book, Creating a Forest Garden is the book. Hold on, sorry. You're seeing a lot of my midriff today. This book here is uh, the, 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 the book which I kind of recommend for everybody. It's a great uh, overview by Mark, Creating a Forest Garden by Martin Crawford. It's a great overview of the, of the in process of creating a forest garden and also the plants and it divides up into the different layers of a forest garden as well so it's a fan it's a fantastic book and i've um yep i've used it a lot and it's 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 a really really good start so there's lots of very uh very exciting plants in there but uh, it's like everything one of the things i've found starting out with forest gardening is it's the and not coming from a gardening background either is that there's just so much to learn there's so many different plants and i think it's really really useful to um to uh to, to to be able to see all the information in one place now the another website that i recommend a great deal is plants for a future which is an online database of uh of useful plants set up by ken fern uh back in the day and this is uh yeah it's just a really it's a really really fantastic uh resource if you want to look up if you want to look up look up a plant it's great it kind of gives you all the information about the plant this is mashua uh and you can search for stuff online you go oh mashua and it gives you the details and it's and it's great so i actually got some mashua this is from alison alison tyndale at backyard larder i I think she she gifted me some Monsieur or did I buy them? I can't remember. But um anyway, they they're massive. They're really they're like nasturtiums. They scramble like nasturtiums and they're actually a really nice plant and you can eat the eat the leaves as well in the salads. And is that gonna focus go in focus? Can you see that? <laughs> that's the uh that's the Mashua. So it's um they're kinda like kids say they look like maggots or willies. But <laughs> But there we go um and i've tried started cooking them i wasn't hungry really but i shouldn't really have cooked them when i wasn't hungry because then um, they're they're all right they're a bit they're lighter texture than a potato uh, and a bit bitter slightly there's a slight bitterness um allison kind of recommends f 
frying them so I'm going to fry them with some cumin and uh, see how that see how that goes. But anyway, so this is the uh, the website, Plants for Future website, which is great, which is really really good. Uh, but it's quite tricky sometimes to see. You want to search for, for for certain things. It can take quite a long time to find information. So what a, a chap called Ollie Boone um, for, via the Forest Garden UK Facebook group suggested that um, he was going to start creating a um, a spreadsheet, uh, which is kind of funny, huh? and said, would anyone else like to... forestgarden.wales spreadsheet. So he said, would anyone else like to create a spreadsheet as well? And funnily enough, I had actually been creating spreadsheets for uh, windbreak species and ground cover species already. So this is the stuff that I've... Um, this is a... whoopsie. This is the stuff that I've already done. So I've already created some windbreak species, ground cover species, native species for tapestry lawn. So I kind of, I'd actually started the process off, but not for the entire lot. And he said, the kind of key thing that Ollie said was, well, just do the species that are in this, in Martin Crawford's book, uh, and then that keep it to a, 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 a usable size and also organize it along those lines as well. So it's a great idea, really, really good idea. So I said, yep, I'll help out. And so, so Ollie and I were, were working on it and another chap called Chris Day was helping out as well so it was, it was great and we actually managed to do it and then yesterday I think yesterday or the day before yesterday Trevor from Plants for a Future said that we, it's okay to use the data in this way and to share to share it because all the links on the spreadsheet go back to Plants for a Future so this is what we've made <laughs> it's a spreadsheet it's a forest garden spreadsheet so I'm very very excited about this I um the the link for this I will put the link will come up now is um hold on that way bit dot l y bitly forward slash forest hyphen garden hyphen spreadsheet nice and simple I wanted to put some names in there as well but but that'll do so bitly forward slash forest hyphen garden hyphen spreadsheet and that will take you to this page here and this is what you will see and it has been divided up divided up into different sections i'll go along the the, the information along the along the hold on where's my hands going along the top i'll just talk about the different different categories and then uh and then the the, the how it's organized in terms of species and then how to sort it as well so it's it is yeah you know, it's 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 a it's a very handy tool to be able to sort to find information quickly this is the the whole purpose of it is to is to enable people to see the the information which is on plants for a future relating to the plants in martin crawford's book and to see it all quickly so without further ado i have organized it so that um uh, the, the, the the along the top so the common name oh if you ever see a little black triangle hold on, let me zoom in for you Whoa. Whoa. So if you see a little black triangle, that means there's a note there. Yeah. So a black triangle means note. And then you can copy and paste information from that note as well. And I've started off with the um, common name. So I've also locked the spreadsheet so that if you scroll, you can see straight away that the information is locked and then also there's uh, slightly annoying with the links but they are useful <clears throat> there's also uh, it's it's alternating rows so you can see it's more easy to, to read horizontally as well so start off with a common name and the, the basically the plants are in the order in which the, how the books organized which makes life a lot you know it's a lot lot easier um, there's a couple of minor variations but it's essentially the same so um do you really want uh, <laughs> it's about canopy species shrub species and then herbaceous perennial and ground cover species and that's how it's designed so canopy shrub herbaceous perennial and ground cover so that's that's the the basic organization in three layers and three sections so the latin name so we start off we'll start it starts off with uh, quince and <clears throat> under the common name there is a link in the common name which takes you to 
the plants for a future page. So there's a direct link, so you can go straight down here, look for stuff, and then link straight away to the plants for a future page. There is also a link there as well to the um, rootstock page. Now, a big shout out to Martin Hayes, uh, or oh, his website, his, this is his website, Martin, the appleman.can.uk for his advice about different rootstocks and really saying just keep it keep it simple so he said use there's a company called uh, Walcott um, Walcott Nursery and this is the kind of information of use for the for the rootstocks dwarf semi dwarf moderate and vigorous there are more rootstocks and there are variations and there's like rootstocks for particular situations and it so it can get a little bit a little bit tricksy and technical but the, for the purposes of the spreadsheet, we just want to keep it nice and easy. But that's that rootstock information is on there as well, uh, <clears throat> and it will give you a quince and a quince A rootstock, for example. So here with the apple, oh, I'm I'm going a bit all over the place. Let's let's let, let's take a step back. Let's go let's go along the along the top. So common name, Latin name, and then abbreviation, <laughs> and the abbreviation. Uh, is is for another reason is for is for creating a, a forest garden CAD library and a link to the image library. I'll come on to those in a minute. The family, which is kind of useful to be able to see what family it's in, uh, what family the species is in, and then the habit. And this is the habit from the from the from the Plants for Future database. So, is it a tree or a shrub or is it a kind of ground cover? Uh, deciduous or evergreen, and then the height m height. And width. Now, this is the kind of basic information that you, the basic information when I'm designing a forest garden. This is the kind of critical stuff that I use. Its height and its diameter, and you kind of think about <clears throat> first things first is like the, the the volume that a plant takes up in a particular space, and how much shade it casts, and how much protection it provides. So that's the initial kind of information. Then we move on to the the or kind of uh, the, the 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 growing conditions, um, and that's uh, so. This is kind of once you have an idea. Oh, we might be able to have I don't know, like a, a sweet chestnut, which is uh, however big a sweet chestnut is, um, fifteen meters high. Oh, I should I should find it. Let's just do a search. So look look up a sweet chestnut. Castania sativa, and it's oh, 30 meters high, 15 meters diameter, and using that information, I'll just I'll just highlight it here. Using that information, 30 meters high, 50 meters diameter. So I know, okay, it's a big old tree. It put it, put it to the back. It needs full sun. Well, hold on a second. But it's a big old tree, 30 meters high, 50 meters diameter. And it then we go on to the actual growing conditions. And this happened with a client uh, who said, oh, I'd like to grow some nut trees. And I suggested a sweet chestnut. And she said, well, I told you we've got heavy clay. I didn't think sweet chestnuts could handle heavy clay. Uh, no, they, I forgot. <laughs> and no, they can't, they, can't, um, they can't handle heavy clay. So this is where the conditions, the, the, the type of soil that you have. Oh, it says it can handle heavy clay here. Anyway, point is that you look up, you look up the conditions light um for the for the soil type whether it's light soil uh which is a, a sandy medium soil which is loam and heavy soil which is clay that's quite funny actually because a lot of places i've actually read there will be yeah a lot of places i've read martin crawford's book on trees um sweet chestnuts can't handle heavy clay so that is probably something which needs to be amended there we go so there will be an anomalies along the way but you get the idea and then the shade how much light does that plant require so these are the conditions the growing conditions so shade is i'll just zoom in for you let me let me pull this up here and then zoom in oh here we go and the shade is a uh, shade part shade or full sun and that's the um i can edit that as well so that's that's the the information about s uh, s is shade p is part shade f is full sun and you get the idea of how much how much sunlight so that's one of the critical factors the type of soil that the plant requires and how much sunlight the plant requires and can handle 
And then the moisture, um, D, M and W, dry, moist and wet. And that's the kind of soil that there is. And then finally is the pH, the acidity of the soil. So acid is A, neutral is uh, N, and alkaline or basic is B. So that's, that's the, the acidity of the soil. And then last three are whether it can, whether it's, capable of growing in poor soil um, so for example I know that hawthorns are renowned for growing in in poor soil <laughs> oh, that's interesting it says sweet chestnut can grow in poor soil as well um, whether it can handle drought and whether they're self fertile and whether there's any scent so those are the kind of the growing type conditions that that's that orange headings and then the the kind of pinky red headings are the type of crop that you get so you got your fruit nut uh, leaf and leaf and stalk and shoots nuts and seeds um, and then oh flower shoot root herb miscellaneous spice sap tea and nectar and whether they're uh, in terms of use, whether they're any good as a windbreak hedge, and um, if they provide ground cover, and uh, if they can be used as poles, or for tying, or for basketry, and whether they're nitrogen fixing, and whether they're a mineral accumulator, if you can have a dye from them, and if they're medicinally medicinally useful. So I've had to kind of, there's an awful lot of different uses for a lot of different plants. So some of these, some plants aren't really kind of given a proper airing. But the thing, the whole point is, if you're looking for poles, for example, and you want to search by, by whether it uh, creates poles or not, then do always look up the information further, either in the book or in the plants for future. So... This is the idea is to provide a kind of basic information to be able to sort by and then you can get into more detail later on. And then the final two columns are the ID. So because there are a limited number of species in the book, uh, each each species has an ID. This makes it easier to sort by, that's all. It's just a, it's a, it makes it easier to use a spreadsheet. So you can say, oh, ID number, blah, blah, blah. And that's that will always be the ID. People have said, oh, are you going to add any extra species um, and I'm not I'm not going to because it, the whole point is it's limited to a limited number and it's the, 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 the it's the species which are in the book so it ties in nicely so it makes a lot more sense to keep them all together um, and then it's the Crawford um, Martin Crawford's notes about you know where whereabouts it you know, basically which section it comes under so he has like subheadings canopy fruit and common let me just zoom in can i zoom in yeah so he'll have a different a different division and a different kind of subtitle and that's what i've been using yeah put it put in the notes here okay so that is that and then you can see whoa <laughs> so my computer is a little bit on the old slow side um boom and i scroll down there's 450 plants here so that's uh, 452 kind of give or take so it's pretty good you know there's there is missing information um, and there is kind of stuff I can add and there will be there will be things which aren't properly correct so do use it with a use it with a pinch of salt but it's uh, I'm pretty uh, proud of it we've done it we've done a good job and now they actually okay very quickly then just quick look at the root stocks um, and let me github.com oh no not that one okay so I just want to very quickly forest garden gallery.uk so there's two other things I just want to very quickly look at uh, is the rootstocks 
Now, part of the idea behind this spreadsheet is that not only can you link from the spreadsheet to the plants for a future entry, you can also uh, link to, there's also a link here from the abbreviation to the GitHub repository. This is quite specialized. But what I would like to do is for there to be more, to make it easier for people to be forest garden designers and for people who are interested in taking this route to find out more about using CAD, part of my plan is to create a course for forest garden designers uh, using CAD, but that's kind of down the line really. Uh, and <laughs> to that end, I have, cre I have created a a library of trees so you can see here there's a it's just a circle <laughs> which is the diameter it has the um, abbreviation of the of the tree and then the full name of the tree and the height and the diameter in uh, written down and if you have if you use CAD you can then it's, it's kind of nice because you can use you can use different layers I'll just show you here you can use different layers to toggle the visibility of the extra data so it doesn't get too crowded so you have a nice load of circles on there and the whole idea behind this is you can say okay I want to, I want to plant these are the trees that I want these are the plants that I want and you can put everything down on the on the on, on the CAD design and I copy and paste it so it just reduces the amount of work that you do that you have if you're using CAD to design your forest garden this is I know a little bit niche and a little bit specialist but it's it's there and then the other thing um, which and that's under that's under my old web design moniker grow digital this is the forest garden CAD um, so yeah that's that's ongoing that that will be yeah, added to bit by bit but that's freely available and then the other thing that is that we're slowly slowly working on is adding links to the um to the forest garden gallery so for example this is put together by a group of lovely people uh, from the forest garden whatsapp group and the <laughs> it's the same thing the organization of well i'll, I'll, I'll show you here forestgardengallery.uk and it's organizing all the plants in exactly the same way so each of the plants will have an entry and it's organized along the same route so you have canopy shrubs herbaceous, herbaceous perennials and ground cover annuals biennials and climbers and those are the kind of four categories and then you go in and it's divided the same so you go oh fruiting trees oh quince will be here quince is at the top you can see there and then um it's the same oops it's the same for the the same order as it is on the spreadsheet so that makes life a lot easier and there is a link here so you can then say oh fig click on the link kaboom it takes you straight to the fig there we go so yeah that gives you extra information and then you click on the image and you can say oh this is what a fig fruit looks like and it has the original image here and has a bit of text there and then you can use the image all of the images in the Forest Garden Gallery are Creative Commons and they're free to be used for non-commercial purposes. So that's how they're chosen. So there we go. So there's two extra things which are kind of backing up all this information, backing up the information in the spreadsheet is the link to the to the to the Forest Garden Gallery and the link to the Forest Garden CAD library. For most people, the Forest Garden Gallery is going to be the, the more interesting one. Oh, cool. I haven't done any of the chat at all, but I haven't got time really. So I'll do that at the end. And then finally, sorting a spreadsheet. Because <laughs> I'm sure you're dying to know what is the, what's the point. What is the point of all this? So the idea is that you have, you've got a site. Um, oh, I've got a great example. So for example, I've got a site uh, the, the, where I'm doing the, an eco homes job and i there's a northern bank and i want an evergreen well actually it's kind of not a very good example because the one i want isn't here anyway i want an evergreen uh an evergreen hedge as a as a wind break and i want that um about three meters high yep so i haven't actually done this this is just like flying by the seat of my pants what you do is click here on the I'll show you that first thing to do is to click on the top left hand corner 
of the spreadsheet and that selects all the cells in the spreadsheet and then we go data sort range by so sorry sort range and it says sort range now I want something which is windbreak and then I want to sort it by whether it's uh, deciduous or will this work evergreen kind of interesting actually because I'm it's interesting to use it in different ways and see what see what comes up oh okay so there we go it's ordered it for me I don't know what it's gonna be come on then oh dear <laughs> oh it's a bit slow so my computer is really really slow come on computer okay so that's the windbreak I must have, I should have done it in the reverse order here we go oh good goodness me this would be much quicker on your own computer because I am streaming and I'm trying to get the data as well oh come on oh good lord it's a bit <laughs> okay and then if we just go over here wow so you can see it's all these from from here down are the wind breaks and then Oh, not that one. <laughs> Sorry, it's really. This does not make good. Uh, this does not make good live streaming, does it? Windbreak. Oh, come on, computer. I am actually trying to scroll. There we go. Whew. Oh, it's it's painful. It really is painful. Here we go. So I uh, you don't know if you can see that. Um, windbreak here. They're all checked, and then deciduous over here go on and give it no you're not going to say it, are you and that's deciduous this column this column here uh, is deciduous or evergreen okay so now you can see you've got the checks on the right hand side which are the windbreak and then i can see which ones are deciduous and which ones are evergreen over here so now i can say okay well three meters high i might uh, we've got evergreen at the bottom um and you could say three meters high well ebbing silverberry which otherwise known eliagnus um eliagnus eliagnus what the hell is it called ebingii x ebingii that's four meters by four meters there's new zealand flax which is three meters by two meters there's darwin's barberry which is three meters so evergreen hedges i've got a choice of about about three which are around about the three meter mark evergreen windbreak hedges plant hedge plants okay uh, so so that's you can see what i've done there so ebbing silver bear is one it's evergreen it's four meters it's a windbreak darwin's barberry is another one and you can just use it like that way you can sort stuff by whatever by its function or you can sort stuff by its size or whether it's deciduous or whether it's fruit or by its family um so you can, or what soil it likes and this enables you to to do that so the, the this this spreadsheet enables you to sort stuff kind of really really really, really easily and a lot quicker <laughs> a lot quicker than i can show you because of the slowness of my computer oh please come on thank you there we go temporary filter off okay so click top left hand corner top left hand um, top left hand of the spreadsheet click on data oh dear is so slow is so slow click on data sort range and then you can choose how you want to sort it uh, to 
to what you want to sort it by so you can sort it by any of the top of the top headings so that's really really handy you want a windbreak hedge or you want a fruiting tree which likes part shade or un unlikely but possible so you get the idea or the particular high or particular soil conditions or whether it's got scent or whether it's a nitrogen fixer you get the idea you can just sort by all these different things there are instructions i will be doing a more coherent and more a, 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 a more coherent and a more kind of a slick presentation of actually how to do it but that's how to use it if you go forest garden wales hold on where's my finger forest garden wales uh forest garden dot wales forward slash spreadsheets i'll add it to here as well and there's uh, the little thing here how to sort a spreadsheet and that shows you very kind of very quickly here as well okay and i will be doing a little youtube video um, there we go. That's half an hour. That's spot on. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope that <laughs> I hope that's kind of useful. So it's a bit of a there's a lot of information to take in. But bit.ly bit.ly forward slash forest gar forest hyphen garden hyphen spreadsheet. That's a spreadsheet, and then you can sort sort that spreadsheet to find the plant that you want. Uh, I hope that's very useful. Okay. Thank you very much for watching.